Have you ever wondered if you can change your day by thinking about the different possibilities? That's what we'll talk about today. The distinction between the past, present, and future is only a stubbornly persistent illusion. Albert Einstein. Well, that's the kind of quote you'd expect from Albert Einstein. Can't understand it because he's too smart for all of us. Last time we talked about the far and advanced future person and whether or not we can affect change, make things different for ourselves way into the future. Today, we're going to talk about what we can do in the near future. Can we make next week you even better? So in this podcast, we're going to talk about article, a couple of movies that all talk about what it is we can do in the future to make our next week version of you better. Today's discussion comes from this book review I heard of a children's book called When I Wake Up. And it's about this little boy and how he has four imagined possibilities for his day where he could do What his mom and dad wanted him to do? He could go off and do something artistic, or he could go fall out of trees and eat marshmallows. And to be honest, I haven't read the book, but the concept inspired me a bit, thinking if we get up on, let's say, a Saturday morning where we have plenty of time to choose our own day, what would it be like if we sat there and thought about our possible days? And after hearing about this book, I started doing that primarily when I have a lot of time ahead of me. The idea is that you think I could have the kind of Saturday where I get a ton of things done and my yard looks great and my chores are done and I feel really fulfilled. I could have another kind of day where I decided that I'm going to go have fun, go for a hike, go explore something I've never seen before. That's fun too. Or maybe there's another kind of Saturday where I just stay at home I watch some TV, play some video games, and take a nap in my chair. Very relaxing. But now I try to think about it with a little bit more planning ahead. Not so much what do I want to do today, but instead, what kind of outcome do I want to have for today? And I think it's a good way of looking at possible days that you might have ahead of you. Sometimes when we think of movies and how they think about the different kinds of days you have, It's very traumatic. Reminds me when I saw that Gwyneth Paltrow movie called Sliding Doors. And there are two different possibilities. One where she catches a train and catches her boyfriend cheating on her. And another one where she misses the train. She never sees that he's cheating on her. And then there's the two outcomes that respond from each of those behaviors. What happens when we turn left instead of turning right? What if we go straight instead of going home? It's all sorts of different things that movies try to tell us about the day we might have just by being slightly different in that day. And to be honest, it always kind of messed me up a little bit because I started to think, isn't the world unruly that if I decide I'm going to take Highway A home instead of Highway B home and maybe my whole life changes? I hit a deer, I get in a car accident, something traumatic happens. I turn the other direction And I meet someone at a rest stop and we become friends. Life feels sometimes that uncertain. And there was another movie called Run, Lola, Run, which was a German movie where this woman's boyfriend was going to rob these Deutschmarks and she was going to be responsible for delivering them. All sorts of different outcomes happen based on whether she crosses this road Eventually, she gets killed. She kills her boyfriend. All these different outcomes happen just because the streetlight turns green. And to be honest, at a time in my life, that kind of freaked me out a bit when I was thinking about life being so tenuous and being so on a hinge of just one decision that everything can change just like that. Like I said, all because you go left instead of right. In the movie About Time, in episode 68, where he finds out he's a time traveler and he goes back into time to either meet a woman, get her to fall in love with him, try to fix other things that go on in his life, try to help a sister. And in the end, he finds out that the best way he can make an impact is by living life, not necessarily by changing time. So then that made me think, well, what is the lesson in all of it? You know, if time travel really isn't going to fix anything, 
if going back in time can't make choices? And does our life really hang in the balance based on if we go left or right? So it feels like it might be that way. But in the end, the way our life, for the most part, turns out has to do with what we do on a daily basis. What we do, the habits we have, make up all the different things that happen in our lives. It's not so fragile that if we turn left or right, we'll have a completely different experience. Chances are Gwyneth Paltrow would have always discovered that her boyfriend was cheating on her. He was making bad choices and he was eventually going to get caught in the real world. Or I was watching a show the other day where this woman decided to drive in a very dangerous situation. We all knew watching the show that something bad was about to happen. And I'm not telling you the show because I don't want to do any spoiler alerts. But anyone watching this could say she decided to drive in a time where she absolutely should not have been driving. Of course, accident, something terrible happened. And we knew it was going to happen because of that bad choice. Life is about, of course, making good choices. Life is about making sure that we have solid habits and behaviors in place. But it also has to do with us being wise in the decisions we make. Her deciding to drive is a big one because she should not have been driving. But me deciding to go left or right in an intersection won't change my life, won't change my future. So what could we do instead to make sure that we had a better rest of our day today? And that's where we get back to that book about what the boy was going to do when he woke up all the decisions he had to make, and what we can do when we're going to wake up. So as I mentioned, I've been trying this for the last couple of weeks. When I have time, I try to think about my future self and what my future self really needs the most. There are times where I've just been stressed out, and my future self would really appreciate a day off, where I just relaxed, took a nap, and just, in general, take it easy on myself let some of that stress out. There are other times where I've been giving myself too many breaks and things have not gotten done. And my future self would really appreciate it if I went into winter with all the things I needed to get done, done. So the first part that I have in all of this is try to imagine when you get up, like I said, on a weekend day or sometime when you have a lot of time on your hand, what is it that your tomorrow person would appreciate most if you did today. There are times when I look out in my backyard and think, oh my gosh, I need to go out there and get this stuff done. I have this firewood I need to organize. I have a fire pit out there. Wouldn't it be nice if all that was ready to go at any time? Or there are times where I just haven't gotten enough exercise or been working on my podcast a little bit too much and I could really use an adventure, something exciting, someplace I could go and travel and see something new. So I don't believe that there's this thing that you can do that says every Saturday I'm going to get up and I'm going to have this kind of Saturday or I'm going to have this kind of afternoon. What you really need to do is step it backwards and try to see if you can figure out what would be the best thing that you could do for yourself, for your tomorrow self, for your next week self, or maybe for your next year self. And that's where I think it helps too when we think about that future self Can you imagine your future self thinking about, wow, I am in shape, I look good, I feel good, and that is because I exercised every day? Or is my future self going to say, wow, another year gone, still didn't do anything, still didn't lose the weight, still didn't get into shape? Does your future self look at the backyard and lament the fact that everything's disorganized and a mess? What helped me think about this even a little bit more was... Thinking about how far in the future can we imagine our future self? And I'm just talking about doing a weekend, a Saturday. What will Sunday Jill appreciate the most if I do a different kind of day on Saturday? And I think the answer is making smaller choices, smaller steps for people in our future, but more like our person next week, our person next month. How can we go about making our days better in the short term? And by having a summary of all those changes in the short term, again, with our lives being composites of our habits, our actions, our behaviors, 
by making small short-term good decisions, we will also have good decisions in the long term as well. This isn't a call not to make big future plans, but instead, take those small steps to improve yourself the best you can because each of these little steps will bring you in a direction towards your future. And the more prepared you are for the shakeups that it will happen, there's definitely going to be shakeups. And I've seen so many shakeups in my own life, things I never expected would happen, including a pandemic, that when we make those small, good decisions, good small habit changes, it'll set us up for the proper future from the person we can't even know who that is. First of all, when it comes to short-term goal setting, you want to make sure a couple of different things are true. First of all, that you know what would make your life better in the near future. Something that you could do this week that would make your next week, your next month, so much better. We want to put priorities associated with those goals so we know which one would have the biggest impact. We want to look out for some low-hanging fruit, something that's super easy to get done that would make a huge impact in what you're trying to get done or just make your life better. For example, I had some art I wanted to hang. I just never seemed to get around to it. But you know what? I finally did it. It took all of 30 minutes to get this art on the wall. And all day long, I've been admiring, oh, now that looks really nice. So it was a low-hanging fruit item, and I got it done. And I appreciate it. It wasn't a big bang thing, but I sure made my day a little bit happier. We want to make sure that whatever short-term goals we're choosing have a positive impact on our habits. For example, if you're trying to build up the habit of not eating too much sugar, perhaps going out for dessert is not the thing you should pick because you're really working on a habit. It might make some short-term goal for you. Just feel like a big dessert. But And overall, it's going to impact a habit you're trying to build. So make sure that whatever you pick for a short-term goal doesn't really hurt anything that you're working on long-term. Make sure that whatever you're working on is tangible, something that you can see a defined goal from. Make sure at the end, whenever you do this thing, whatever you decide to do, whatever kind of day you decide to have, give yourself that positive reinforcement so the next time you have a choice, of doing something that will benefit you in the short term, you kind of have that habit going well too. Make sure you pick something that you can do in a short term. Again, we're talking about a Saturday, an afternoon, little time after work. This is not a big item we're picking. So make sure whatever you pick to do with your imagined day is short term, will fit in the amount of time you're giving it, and maybe even give you a little extra time at the end of the day to watch a show, Go for a walk, do something else. Make sure you have a good expectation about what this type of goal is going to do, what kind of impact it might have, and how much effort it will take to get done. Or do you even have the materials around to get those things done? And be creative. Make sure that you don't get into some kind of rut where you're just constantly picking every Saturday. Clean the backyard, take a nap, go for a walk. Think outside the box a little. Jazz it up. Make your life a little bit exciting. Maybe go to another town and go for a walk. Or work on someone else's backyard. Help a friend out. Make sure they're doing okay. But whatever you're trying to think of something that you could do in your four possible days, make sure you add a little creativity to it. That'll keep your life exciting. And it'll just kind of make your life a little bit more interesting. So now here's the next part. Last time, we imagined our way future self, okay? So now when you're looking at your four possible days, I want you to give three different votes. What does the today version of you, what would they like to do? What would the next week version of you wish you would do today? And what would the 10-year version of you wish that you would do today? Then when you have a majority, You always want to pick an odd number when taking votes so that you break the tie. Now you have your thing that you're going to tackle. If you each voted on one thing, drop out one of the things and retake the vote so that you can get a majority vote in something. But you want to make sure that when you're thinking of your four possible days, that you 
first of all, we'll enjoy it to an extent. You'll benefit from it in the short term and potentially benefit from it in the long term. So my challenge to you is think of an action that you can take this week and that would make your future self in a week feel fantastic, feel better about life, and would be in a solid improvement to the future you, you can't even imagine. All right, everyone, thanks so much. I appreciate you being out there. Please remember to subscribe to the podcast. And if you could, tell a friend. It helps people find this podcast. And remember, there's the other podcast, Small Steps with God. And you can find information about both podcasts at smallstepspod.com. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful week. And just remember, you're going to march into the future, regardless of what changes happen, by taking small steps. Small steps.